Hey there, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green, and it is a beautiful, cool, sunny day here in Colorado. And I am going to take you on a short little tour of my orchid collection that is housed at the greenhouses at Fantasy Orchids. So let's go ahead and get started with my biggest bulbophyllum. This is Hal, the bulbophyllum echinolabium. And he just bloomed a couple days ago. If you check my Instagram, you'll be able to see the flowers. But um, I'm kind of concerned with the way Hal is growing. His newest leaf has come out really yucky. And I think it's because water is getting trapped in that sheath as the leaf is developing. And that's causing maybe bacteria, pathogens to fester. So what I've done was it, we have a new growth and I'm putting a little piece of plastic, like a little tent over it. We're going to see if this one does any better. Now Hal has recently been completely repotted, so we are hoping he's going to do a lot better. Now next door to my orchid collection is the collection of Joe, and Joe is a perpetual wanderer on Instagram. He's got a cousin of my bulbophyllum echinolabium. This is Carunculatum, and you can tell they're related. The he's got a couple spikes on his. The flowers are beautiful. And I just wanted to show this guy off because it was so pretty. Joe also has a really nice Bobophyllum lobii, lobii, and it's also putting out flowers. This one, th this, I'm actually surprised the flowers on this guy last quite a long time for a Bobophyllum. This one's well over a week, maybe two weeks old, and it's still, still open and still looking good. So that's interesting. Moving on to this plant, this is uh, Malaxis latifolia, and it has just grown and blossomed into this beautiful thing in a very short amount of time. It is dormant in the winter, it just looks just like an ugly bulb in the winter, but in the spring it starts putting out a new growth, and the new growth has a terminal spike with lots and lots of little flowers that last quite a long time, and as they bloom, you know, the color of the spike kind of changes, so it kind of has this red hot poker look to it. Back at the base of the plant, you can see this is all that was during the winter, just that bulb there. And this little bulb actually came off of that main bulb last year. And so I potted it up, and believe it or not, it is growing as well. So it's like a little mini version. So I, I don't, I wouldn't assume that this is going to bloom this year, but it will definitely grow into a bigger plant. All right, let's look at the slipper orchids. This is Paphiopedilum appletonianum. Really impressed. This thing's been in bloom since February 27th. Today is May 31st. The colors have faded. It's got some browning along the edges, but it's still in bloom. Now this is a uh, Paph callosum, and it's just now opening up. So this is just kind of a sneak preview. The colors look really nice on this one. I'm excited about what it's gonna look like. Uh, the most recent Path to bloom is this one. This is Path Tonsum. And I actually looked up the word Tonsum in Latin and it means shorn, like all the hair has been cut off. And when you examine the flower, it's absolutely true. A lot of Path flowers have little hairs all over them, but this one does not. No hairs. It's totally furless. So it's the bald, it's the bald slipper orchid. But it's got lovely little pattern of spots on it. The pouch is really big, and the flower, just in general, is really, really big compared to the size of the plant, so that's exciting. There's a lot of growth happening right now, and this Bobophyllum medusae has seven new growths on it, which is super exciting because that means in November when it blooms, hopefully each one of those will put out a spike. Same goes for lovely Elizabeth Rufinum. Uh, those two are both in this same uh, pot, and they're putting out lots of new growths there. Hopefully we'll see some blooms on those this fall as well. The Cattleya seedlings are also putting out lots of growth. Um, I think that at Fantasy Orchids, um, in the watering system that they use, they have some kind of a growth stimulator because it, the plants are putting out so many growths, it's just, it's just more than they've ever done before. So it's really interesting to see how they're continuing to grow through the winter, through the spring, more and more new growths. And with each growth, the plant becomes a little bit bigger and a little bit more capable of blooming. When they get to a certain size, they're going to be ready to bloom. That's going to be exciting. Um, 
In fact, one of them is already putting out a sheath this year, and this sheath is no joke. This is a serious sheath. I'm a little bit skeptical because the plant's just not that big. It doesn't really have a big healthy root system, um, but that sheath, that is serious business right there. So. Every day I'm kind of peeking in there and, and trying to see maybe is there something in there pushing out of the sheath, you know. These plants are supposed to push the flower buds out before the growth is even completed, so uh, we will see, we will see. This is another bulbophyllum, this is antoniferum. We've been kind of monitoring this one for the past few months because the new growths were all rotting off. And I repotted it into a drier mix and just kind of kept it dry and I've been spraying it with hydrogen peroxide as well. And look at this, one, two, three, new growths, and fingers crossed, they look like they're gonna make it. So that is wonderful because this plant's kind of been struggling for about six months or so. This is a little um, seedling, actually. It's a seedling bulbophyllum. This is Graviolans. And the hybrid name, or the clonal name is Stinkerbell. <laughs> and Stinkerbell is putting out a new um, growth. Actually, this is Stinkerbell's time self. It's a, it's a, it's a selfing. But the flowers are going to be spectacular one day in the future when it blooms. This is uh, Neo Phoenicia falcata, also known as Vanda falcata. And I am doing a little experiment with this guy. Normally you see them potted up in sphagnum moss in these really decorative pots. And what I've done is I put it in a net pot, sphagnum on the top, but I've put uh, bark in the bottom. And the plant really seems to be doing well. The roots are poking out everywhere. Um, the plant, there's all kinds of new growths on it uh, and it you know I just think Vanda I know it's not a typical Vanda but it, it it does seem to like the air circulation around uh, around its roots it's got that constant moisture at the top looking forward to that blooming in the next few months or in the next few weeks actually all right let's look at the catacetums now if you tuned in last week you saw the video between uh, me and Steven v, v, VKL Van Camp and Lewis talking about catacetum culture. Now, the, the, my catacetums have got roots that are touching the bottoms of their pots. And Steve and I discussed last week that once the root system looks like it's pretty well developed, you can start watering. And uh, he advised me to wait a little bit longer, but I just couldn't, I couldn't wait any longer. So I took the tent off and I've been leaving the pots just out in the open now to receive the daily sprinkling from the watering system in the greenhouse. And what's been really interesting is that the sphagnum is so tight, uh, tightly packed that it doesn't even get that wet when it's been sprinkled on. So they're, they're still kind of in this medium phase. They're not really getting soaked. They're just getting a little bit more moisture. This spot appeared on my Psychnotis Wine Delight uh, last week and I was furious. I have a feeling it is a water spot, maybe a piece, uh, maybe a little bit of water got on there uh, and it just festered, I don't know, but that's, it's, it's annoying to say the least. Alright guys, well let's end on a positive note, overall things are looking really good, a couple plants aren't doing great, but for the most part everything's looking good, really got, that, got our eyes on that Cattleya sheath, we're going to see what happens this summer, hopefully we have some great catacetum blooms coming as well. Uh, I'm probably not going to be broadcasting for a couple weeks. It is summer break and I am taking some time to enjoy myself. So until next time, I'll see you. I'm William Green. Thanks for tuning in.